Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell in the upper right hand corner. Follow me on all forms of social media. Check me out at thedrummerguy.com and enjoy the following presentation. Hey there. Hi, how's it going? I'm good. And you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to do this interview. Yeah, definitely. It's just my pleasure. Oh, awesome. Well, it's uh, great to be able to do this interview and to be able to promote uh, this amazing album, which is just on the horizon, just coming out in a couple weeks now uh, with Sermon. I mean, how does it feel to finally have this debut album coming out? Uh, it feels more than amazing. It's just, it's one of those things where uh, when we started this band, we weren't quite sure where we were headed. But when, when, uh, like when we realized that this is something that we have to do, uh, I could have, I could probably have never believed that this album would be this good, if you know what I mean. So to have it out uh, in just a few days or like a couple of weeks, maybe it's it's exhilarating to say the least. Oh, I can absolutely. I'm very imagine. excited. Yeah, yeah, and I can imagine so. And the more that I listen to this album, the more that I am falling in love with it. I mean. In, you know, just with how brutal and chaotic it can get, and then be able to, like, uh, on the turn of a dime, just become so atmospheric and mysterious. I mean, I just, I love being able to see both sides of that band shining through, and, you know, just, like, giving off a great album feel in 2019. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that really means a lot. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. So, with that in mind, how did this whole band come to be? Well, it started off as like we were we were all friends from before uh, because we had all been in this same scene here in Iceland because we were all in different bands and uh, one day one of us just like floated the idea of like hey we we should we should just hit the practice space and try to make some music together like as our own thing just to goof around and we did. And uh, from that, we created the uh, the heavy band uh, Damages. <laughs> uh, and the plan was just to create the heaviest stuff that Iceland had ever seen. Uh, but then quickly, re we realized that like we might be onto something. So we, we adapted the name, the image, the atmosphere, the theme, and it all just fell into place, kind of. And that became In Miser. So that yeah, it started off as a kind of a joke, but but became something very 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 real, I guess. Oh, and that, you know that's just so cool to see that. I mean, when you were all a part of the scene together, you were able to be friends, and then you know just like uh, having this a uh, great joke idea of creating the heaviest music uh, uh, Iceland has ever seen, and then actually realizing that there's some potential here, something more than just being heavy, and like some really yeah. good music can come out of it, and that's what came out with Sermon, and it's so cool to see that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was, I mean, we've, this band has surprised me in so many ways over, over the period of like us existing. So like we've been playing since, since 2016, I think. Yeah. Late 2016. No, 2017, 2016. Yeah. And in that time, like this band has surprised me more than, more than 10 times just in how how good i think it is and just like how much i like this music it's not that often that you get into a band where you like every single note that is played if you know what i mean and every element of this band speaks for us and yeah it's it's not that common to uh to to be in that situation oh exactly. if i'm making any sense to you oh yeah. absolutely i can completely understand that and you know that's all that's all the greater reason why it, it's awesome to see that you were able to uh, evolve from what was damages into what there is now and it's it was great that you were able to pay a little bit of tribute to that with with a song off the new album called damages but of course uh, with that uh, being one of the heaviest songs if not the heaviest song yeah. on the album not just musically but thematically as well yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah that song was uh yeah that, that song is kind of the song that means the the most to me and and i guess to the guys as well since it is like we've we've had uh yeah we've had some suicides around us uh due to mental illness and, and addiction and stuff like that and this song actually is written uh in light of like one a, a good friend of mine took his own life back in 2017 and this song is kind of 
kind of my homage to him and just this is written for him and for everyone that's in that position like as as so many of us has also been in that position but like i don't know didn't didn't quite finish the job i guess yeah i mean it's such heavy uh you know, thematically, I mean, when it, especially when it comes from real life inspiration, and as someone who goes through mental health struggles myself, I can relate to it on both sides of it. So both uh, losing friends, and uh, you know, potentially of uh, losing my own life as well from mental health struggles. So I mean, it was so great that you were able to tackle this on this album because again, what I appreciate so much about this is uh, even with the atmospheric parts and you know more the cinematic feel of what's going on. Uh, the, the album does show off that brutality and, you know, the chaoticness that's going on. And that can almost be a way of, like, saying with uh, mental health as well, too, because you kind of balance both things that are going on there because there's moments of peace, there's uh, moments of chaos. And when you're able to show it off in something like damages, you know, just, like, straight out what's going on there, I mean, that really means a lot on my end. Yeah, it's, it's same here, man. And, and that it's amazing that you connect with that song in that way. And, yeah, it makes my day, man. It really makes my day. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Both in a, both in a bad way and a good way. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how I feel about it too. You know, it's like I, I, I love it and I also feel bad about it at the same time. But at the same time, I think that's what, you know, the more that you can really relate to the music that you're creating or putting out there for the fan base, the more that it actually means something to you rather than just being background music or something like that. So oh, yeah. when you have that per personal connection to it, it's always going to last longer. And this is definitely going to be one of those albums that I feel like when I'm going through some darker moments in my life that I can put on and realize that other ones are feeling the same way that I do. Definitely. That's, that's, that's amazing, man. That's truly amazing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, I'm just showing, like, uh, how much it does have that personal effect on me, too, and, you know, of course, uh, you know, like, uh, getting back into the musical aspects of it, I mean, again, I appreciate the fact that, you know, it can go from uh, all these different ranges of things that are going on, I mean, obviously having the same core sound, but you're able to show off so many different sides of the band at the same time, and that's such a cool thing to see on a debut album. Yeah, uh, we've actually, ever since we started the band, like, when we started... <laughs> When we started our predecessor, uh, Damages, uh, we were just, yeah, we were going to be happy. But then we we took some sidesteps and then we figured out, like, let's not just, let's not tie ourselves down to a single genre. Let's, let's mix it up. Let's do whatever we think is cool and let's just play the music that we think sounds good. And so we have, like, we have influences from everywhere. Like, I, I come from a power violence and grindcore background. Uh, other members come from a metalcore background and even mathcore and jazz, hip hop, just anything. And so we just like to play what's cool and what we think is fun and what we think is a good song. And like we, we've used it as a measurement. If somebody plays a new riff and we start tagging along, if we don't, it, like if we don't feel the need to just stop playing because it's so good then it's not going on any album or anything then it's just like a little ditty but if we have to stop and like oh my god this is so good then we're doing something with it so oh, that, yeah that's, that's so awesome to hear that and, it, and it's great to see with uh from that songwriting process it's able to work out that way you know it's just like you know, really sitting down, listening to the riff, and really deciding if it if it has a purpose or not. Yeah, I, I guess it. I guess it like comes. I, yeah, I guess you could boil it down to like this sort of a childish approach to music, like uh, like when you were a kid and 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 somebody put on a song and it really made you feel, and you were like, oh whoa, or just or or frightened you or or made you happy or anything. I, I think it. I think it can like, be connected to that, that thing because today, when you listen to music, you're always looking for something. You're like you're always looking for that. You're always waiting for the breakdown, or you're waiting for the blast beat that are over 400 BPM, or you're waiting for that insane vocal line, or whatever. But when you're a kid, you're not waiting for anything. It, things just happen, and so. Like if we go into a riff and I'm expecting stuff, it's not, it's never going to be as good as I want it to be. 
So yeah, I think I think it's that that approach to music that is like that that keeps it fun and it keeps it interesting and keeps us motivated into like yeah surprising us ever ever so often oh that's so cool so what was it like when uh, obviously being friends and being a part of different bands in the Atlantic scene mm -hmm. i mean what was it like to finally be able to get on stage together uh, under this band and play for the first time it was it was it was weird actually uh this is the first band that, uh, like me personally, I'm a vocalist for. Uh, I've always, I've always had an instrument. So our first gig was, uh, we were, we were warming up for Cult Leader, uh, and a house show here in, uh, here in Reykjavik. And like I didn't, I didn't face the crowd because I didn't know how to. Like I just faced Benny, and the other guys faced the crowd, and and we were kind of awkward because we were. We thought this was just like just for fun, but there's always some meaning to it. So when we started that band, it was uh, yeah, it was it was kind of mixed emotions. But when we got going and we realized that this means something, and the image was there, and and we just had to find it, and like everything everything kept falling into place, it became it became a really cathartic experience and it still is uh it's still a way for us to i don't know get our problems out of the way as we as we do before we play a show today we 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 mentally like prepare ourselves by by just bringing up bringing up problems bringing up the hard times telling each other that we were there for them we're there for each other and then we go on stage and we leave our problems there and I don't know, it delivers in a very explosive way for us, and I think it does for the crowd as well. So, yeah, we've, we've come quite a long way from, from being awkward in a basement show, uh, but we, uh, we still remember that show, so, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, that that's so cool, to, I mean, to be able to, you know, have a show like that, especially opening for a band like Cult Leader, being able to, mm. you know, like a, there might have been awkwardness that was going on there, but being able to learn from that show, and you know, just like a, being able to see what it was like being able to play in front of a crowd, in, in front of a crowd like this uh, f for this band, and then being able to, ha by now, being able to get that cathartic feel of what was going yeah. on, and being able to get those emotions out there, to get that aggression out there, and you know, just become a stronger band with each and every show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It was uh, it, it, I think it, it, I think it became like really real to me uh, when I had been sober for a whole month and we were playing a show and I said I said into the mic like I've been sober for a month today and that was the first time like I I admitted it and and I admitted my problem but both the band and and the crowd just like yeah that's awesome and gave me an applause and and still today that keeps me going like that keeps me sober and the guys keep me sober and like it just when i when i when i think back to that single show i don't i don't i don't want to drink again i guess <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, and you know it's it's amazing with uh, how addiction can be. I mean, there's so many good stories that can come of it, and of course, there's so many tragedies that can come from it. But I absolutely love the fact that you were able to stand up there and say that was your first month of being sober on that day. And then I'm sure what had to be one of the most cathartic feeling shows that you ever did, like being able to an announce that to a crowd, and then just being able to let all that pain and aggression out in your vocals, and just I'm I'm I mean, if I was in the crowd that night i would have just been completely stunned with how the show would have went off because of how much i love the album but you know in that live setting but you know it's just like just knowing all of that and then uh being able to find that outlet to be able to continue on like you have with this i mean that's just absolutely admirable and amazing thank you man oh yeah i i cried a lot that set so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and and again, that adds to the real intensity of a show. I mean, when you're able to have something like that, and you know, not just musically, not just the lyrics, but when you can actually have that power of feeling that's going on into letting out those vocals, and then the crowd reaction to that. I mean, I mean, when you can get through that, when you're able to let all of your cards on the table and show who you really are, and then be able to move forward, you can only get stronger from there on out. That's true. That's so true. 
Uh, so, you know, w- with all this in mind, I mean, being able to do so much personal growth and then uh, musical growth within the band as well, I mean, how does it feel to garner the attention of a label like Nuclear Blast? Well, it, it feels quite phenomenal to to be with a label like Nuclear, Nuclear Blast because... I remember, like, I remember being a kid and reading about, I don't know, Slayer or or any of those bands in like in these in these big mis- magazines like Kerrang or Metal Hammer or, or or just or just scrolling through online and 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 seeing that all my favorite bands had that in common, like they were at Nuclear Blast. So I was like, all right, that's a label that that knows what's up. And then, and then we get an offer from them, and it, it, as I said, it's it's phenomenal, and I'm uh, I'm quite thankful for it every day, uh, and yeah, I, we all are actually. We we're we're very thankful for this cooperation, and and it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good and long friendship between this band and Nuclear Blast, and uh, yeah, as long as they'll have us, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it, it's so cool to hear that too. I mean, uh, much like myself, uh, so many of my favorite bands when I was discovering heavy music in general were a part of Nuclear Blast. I mean, whether I was seeing the advertisements when I was picking up an album and I saw the Nuclear Blast logo on the back of it, and they cover so much ground. I mean, uh, be it power metal, be it death right. metal, black metal, uh, hardcore. I yeah. mean, there's so many different bands that are established a part of Nuclear Blast, and it's great to be able to see them showing off some Icelandic love and being able to show what you guys are capable of to such a grand audience. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's amazing, and uh, yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that in mind, I mean, with all of these things that are happening, and then, uh, of course, uh, being able to release sermons. I mean, how was it in the studio when you were finally able to start recording these songs? Well, the uh, the studio period didn't actually give us give you any time to like be astounded or be amazed or or anything like that because. Uh, the producer Sky Van Hoff and his team of Marcos, they they came to Iceland and the we 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 recorded the album in four different studios here in Iceland and we had only three weeks and uh, they say that they 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 record an album like this usually in two months so they had to squeeze like a two months worth worth of work uh, down to three weeks. So it was a lot of early mornings and a lot of late nights and it was just work and they were just, they were ruthless. And, uh, but I, I can't complain because they, in my opinion, they delivered such a good product and really worked us for it. So I'm, I'm very thankful for them. Actually, they are super, super good guys and their work ethic is just amazing. So, oh, yeah. but to, but to be finally like yeah to be finally laying down the lyrics the riffs and all these ideas and how we want it to be presented to the world later on like the days after we finished recording then it kind of settled in and that was the time to be to like think like wow we did this like we did it and uh, yeah it was, it was quite nice it was quite fun <laughs> Oh, and you know, I I love that as well too. I mean, when I listened to the album, I figured this was like months work. Like I figured it did take like a couple or a few months to be able to get everything from the recording process down to the mixing and mastering and all that stuff. But the fact that you guys were able to do this in four different studios and be able to get the work done in three weeks, I mean, that's just mind blowing because it feels like you were just like sitting in the studio from the fan perspective all of this time, like fine tuning everything. And really you didn't even have the chance to do that no i mean the mixing and mastering was done after those three weeks and just i I think it was i think it was a week after that we had the finished product and yeah so i think it was like in in its entirety it was a month with pre-production and everything so yeah we we had no time at all but we're gonna do we're gonna do the second album quite differently. Uh, maybe maybe take a few extra days to it to record it. <laughs> oh, totally. So you know, again, uh, with that in mind, I mean, uh, you know, just having like a pretty much a whole month's work between pre-production and the final notes that were recorded. When you finally got the songs back for being mixed and mastered, I mean, how how did that feel to finally hear those songs uh, fully fleshed out for the first time? 
Well, it, it felt just, it, the feeling is kind of in, indescribable. Uh, we all met together in, in a studio that we had borrowed from a, through a friend. And we got the masters and we sat down and we just kept quiet and we just listened, to, listened through it. And there was like a general, like the final masters. And there, there was a general consensus of relief. And, and like we were, we were both happy and amazed because it was kind of all what we really wanted it to be. We were, we were very satisfied and it was more than we wanted it to be actually. So the feeling that like that came over us and that flushed over us, it was, it was, it was a mixture of relief and just fulfillment and enjoy. So, yeah. Oh. That, that is just simply incredible. I mean, I'm so happy to see that, you know, taking what you've started in 2016 and now in 2019, being able to get that first debut album out, uh, having it turn out the way that it did, seeing the growth of uh, all of you guys, I'm sure, but uh, your personal growth as well. And then, you know, just uh, being able to unleash this in, onto the world on the 1st of November. I mean, there's so much to look forward to in this band. And it's great to see where you are right now, because I just totally see things just continue continuing to rise and get bigger and better from here on out. Yeah, it, it sure looks that way. I mean, our manager has has our lives planned for us uh, through the year 2022. So it's uh, it's quite nice, quite nice. Uh, and anything you can talk about, like uh, uh, potential things that are going to be happening uh, through that time? Uh, I think I'm allowed to tell you that there's going to be another album. Awesome. Uh but I, I don't. I don't even know if I'm allowed to tell you. So, oh, sure. but that's that's about it. I, I can't say anything. We're we're actually we're keeping and we have kept everything that we do very close to the chest. So, uh, yeah, I, I think we're I think we're still doing that. But we're going on tour in January uh, with Darkest Hour through Europe. So that's about all I can tell you. I guess. Oh, and what a pairing that is, too. I mean, I love Darkest Hour, and uh, they've had so many great albums that have really uh, affected me. And the fact that you guys are going out throughout Europe to be able to play with them, that's just so cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited uh, to be going out with them and Fallujah. Uh, I love Fallujah, by the way, and it's yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those tours, I guess. That it's just gonna be like it's gonna be it's gonna be hard, of course, because it's it's like seventeen shows in seventeen days. But I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, and I think we're gonna learn a lot. So yeah. Oh, totally, and yeah, I'm I'm a huge Fallujah fan as well, and they're another great band that uh, that can show off that brutality and technicality of what they can do, but they also have those great atmospheric moments that are going on there that can yeah. happen at the turn of a dime and you know uh being able to see you guys doing a show together like that's i mean uh different styles of course but uh being able to show off that kind of atmosphere at the same at some moments too that's so cool yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm, I'm super excited I, I, honestly i'm i'm also super excited to meet all those guys and just just get to shake some hands and say like hey man thanks for that song or thanks for that album like it really really helped me in times and stuff like that because like both of these bands have they have that have that factor of like you can you can you can you can dive into that music and just not feel the thing that you were feeling. It was it's quite nice, quite nice. Oh yeah, I I find both of those bands to be very cathartic in their different ways. I mean, whether it's more of the hardcore elements of Darkest Hour or more of like a, the technical death metal that Fallujah has been known for. I mean, there's so much to love between this entire bill that's going on there. It makes me very jealous that I don't live in Europe because I would love to be able to see one of those shows because that just sounds like a killer lineup from start to finish. Yeah, fly over, man. Fly over. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> Oh, it definitely sounds like it. And I'm, I'm very happy for you, I mean, to be able to uh, tour with bands that mean something to you. And uh, just like you said, uh, being able to shake some hands, thank them for songs and albums. And hopefully they dig what you do as well, too. And, you know, just being able to put up that live show, hoping that they dig what you do. And then having the crowds just enjoy the entire night. I mean, you know, it might be a really hard, hard 17 days, but I think at the end of it, it's just going to be an awesome experience. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> we felt the same thing when we uh, when we did ten days with uh, with all pigs, all pigs must die, and like we we were looking at it beforehand as like okay, this is going to be super difficult, but 
when we got on the road, it, we were like two or three gigs in, and we were like, yeah, we could do this forever. We could we could keep doing this for four months. So I, I guess we're just hungry. Uh, I mean, we're, we're we're super hungry, and yeah, we like doing this. Oh, that that is just so cool. And I I think with that, I think that's a fantastic note to end on. And thank you so very much for taking the time to uh, talk to me about everything that's going on in your world right now, uh, from the very personal stuff to this. Uh, uh, the, the formation of this band to now being able to say that Sermons is coming out on the 1st of November through Nuclear Blast and everything to look forward to, especially like in the in 2020, I mean, with uh, what's going on with uh, Dark Stower and Fallujah. I mean, the fact that you guys get to be on a bill like that, being signed the Nuclear Blast, I mean, everything seems to be going up and up. And from what I've heard from Sermons, you guys absolutely deserve that. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. Oh, not a problem. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I hadn't brought up yet? Um, no, I guess not. I guess uh, I guess we're kind of good on on the subject. Just uh, yeah, just just message to get out there. I mean, you're not alone, you're, and don't go through things alone if you if you don't need to. 